Hello Galaxy, I'm Chris Perillo, and I wanted to talk through a few ways that Google could beat Apple. Keep in mind that there is no winner in a race that never ends. This actually came up as an opportunity. Someone who was tuned in to a live simulcast of the podcast recording, you should subscribe to the podcast, search for Chris Perillo, my name, in your favorite podcast client. I should show up, not in person, but in your client. It would be weird otherwise. Uh, they were watching because I simulcast the podcast recording on twitch.tv slash Chris Perillo, the Twitch profile. It's not just for subs, though you should become a sub, and then you can join the Discord chat room just like the patrons who... Support me on patreon.com slash Chris Perillo. Uh, they offered the possibility of me doing this or talking through ways, and I came up with at least five ways that Google could beat Apple or at least run with them, it, it be moving neck and neck. Some would argue that this is a non-issue because Google's already beating Apple. But are they? <laughs> I, I don't know if I'd go that far. Uh, certainly, they may be doing better in certain areas than in other areas. This is not a conversation about market share. It's never really been about market share, though. I know it's a, gr a bragging point that I'm kind of ripping out from underneath you. If you, well, there are more Android people out there. Well, they're not really people. It's a platform. I know there are more Android devices out there. Certainly, I, I'm not arguing that. I, I, I don't think that is really relevant in this case. Uh, certainly, it would be relevant if we were having a conversation about developers and, 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 and what they have an opportunity uh, to build on one platform or another. And, you know, Apple's beat them at that game. But it's a, it's a race that never ends. So the first uh, reason or way that I thought uh, effectively, uh, a strategy uh, to uh, uh, see Google move the ball forward from where they are today, is to continue to double down on software as a focus. This to me was uh, the biggest thing to come out of the recent uh, Google announcements. This is the, the, the thing that has me so excited to get a Pixel 2. And a Pixel 2 XL. And yes, I still want an original Pixel and a Pixel XL. I'll figure out a way to get them. Can't have them all, unfortunately. It's not that easy. Uh, I have wanted to get a hold of the original Pixel. Uh, not because of the hardware. It's never really been about the hardware uh, for me. Uh, this is a motif that if you've never listened to me talk, you would have heard over and over again. Pretty much, I should get it like tattooed on my arm. I'm just I'm not a fan of, like, needles and, you know, tattoos. The only tattoo I have is, like, an electrical burn that I got when I bridged the gap between a, a car on a roller coaster and the, <laughs> and the track, and I, sh I should not have done that. Uh, like, like, my arm went numb. It, it was a bad scene. So, <laughs> back to software, shall we? The, uh, the scope of Google's position cannot be understated. When they mentioned... Uh, that their strategies around AI plus software plus hardware, that excited me greatly because knowing full well that Android as a general experience has been hindered not by certain design principles or opportunities in hardware, but specifically because the software has not necessarily evolved as quickly as I would have wanted it to. And when I say evolved, I'm not talking about features. I'm talking about implementation. Uh, honestly, uh, one of the, the, the best Android experiences that I had uh, was on the Nexus 4. And then after that, I think uh, Nexus 5 or 5X, I can't remember the, the, the names. Uh, moving on to the Nexus 6P, uh, I haven't had a Pixel yet, which is really a mass market opportunity for Google. Uh, more so than the, ne the Nexus line of products, which served more as kind of a, a, a reference point for OEMs uh, to effectively look at and say, oh, that's what Google you know, thinks uh, Android could be. Okay, good to know. We're going to do something completely different, entirely different. We're going to take what you did and we're going to... Um, but it's, 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 it, 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 it's still something that I believe is, is critical. So if they double down on that software story, I think it's amazing. This is something that I've wanted from any company, Google notwithstanding. I mean, if, if Apple doubled down on software, I'd be happy. The problem is, is that when Apple does it, it's just, you know, mentioning a feature. 
they don't talk about the implementation or or or, or they'll 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 just kind of throw it in there but they won't talk about how it, it's it's seamlessly integrated with the hardware and the experience anymore that used to happen that used to be core to their ethos apples and this is where when i say that google has out appled apple the reason why is because they've given software center stage with AI and with hardware. And I think Google has nailed AI with my uh, experience in using Google services. They do, or Google does, and its, its products do a better job at handling requests in such a fashion that I feel it's more intuitive and less frustrating. This is a problem that I've run into with Apple's stuff as of late. I'm not talking about jank right now. Let's 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 sideline the jank. Uh, I'm talking specifically about, for example, um, a voice command. You, you could say, "Mome Moogle" or "May Miri." Hopefully, hopefully you know why I just did that because I don't want to trigger anybody's assistance. Uh, I'm not going to say that Google does a job perfectly every time. But Siri, as I've said before, is a sex panther. 60% of the time, it works all the time. And it's maddening. Uh, but if Google elevates software to the level of AI, to the level of hardware, they all become equally important. That's important to me because they are all equally important. And... Almost as a backlash, I, I've, I've uh, uh, you know, rebuked those who continue to fawn over specifications and what the device looks like. And, oh, well, it doesn't have this and it doesn't have that. And okay, I guess people care about it, but it's, it's never just been about the hardware. And for the longest time, people have been led to believe that it's all about the hardware. But it's not. I can tell you this, I've never misled you. In my 20 years of doing this, I've never misled you. The software is equally as important to the hardware, if not more important. I've used another example. Let me go ahead and clarify that for those who you know, don't want to believe flat facts. You could have a, a lackluster piece of hardware that is operating on good software, and it's a good experience. But you could have a great piece of hardware running on... Uh, lackluster software, and it's a poor experience. I mean, you've probably seen a, a fancy gadget. Oh, it's brand new and it's fast, but but the experience sucks because because the platform is not operating well or the features are half baked. That's the example I'm talking about. And given that Google made that very clear, it excites me because I'm sorry, not sorry. Apple isn't doing that at all, and even if they were saying it. You don't have to look very hard to see where that uh, would-be promise would fall short in terms of an experience. So by Google saying it's hardware, software, AI, they're talking about the user experience. The fact that they reiterate user, user, user uh, ad infinitum in this recent uh, keynote presentation is exciting. And, and the products underscore that. If Osterlo is effectively driving that train, I'm aboard. I'm all aboard. Uh, I, I couldn't say that because I'm not the uh, the conductor necessarily. But um, it's, it's, it's something that if they keep hammering that point home, it, it has me. It has my attention as someone who's been watching this industry and, and been steeped in it and, 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 and providing perspectives and opinions and feedback all along. Um, if they just continue with that, ah, things will get better. And then we'll see some competition. Then maybe Apple will stop not it not not innovating. Apple does innovate. Apple does iterate. I'm not going to say that. That I think is another misnomer. But Apple will start recognizing the value of its software and services. Or if it doesn't, it should. If it continues to do what it's doing, it ain't going to be pretty for users. I don't care what the device looks like. I'm not talking about that kind of pretty. I'm talking about your general experience. So they're taking hardware seriously. It's more than just a hobby.
And if they continue to keep software and AI in the, in, in the center, they'll have a winner. But if they start going down the hardware path and hardware solutions, they've lost. They've got other hurdles to overcome. I think that pixel adoption is going to be stunted for a few different reasons. There are things that I think Google could do to make the pixel more prevalent, and advertising isn't necessarily the way to do it. Working with exclusives isn't necessarily the way to do it. I've got some ideas. That will be a topic for a different video if you're so interested. If Google is interested in, in, in the ideas I might have to offer. Hi, my name's Chris Perillo. I'm everywhere across social. The second thing Google might do to beat Apple is continue to drive self-branded, high-quality, low-cost products. So I, I've avoided uh, any kind of smart home anything. I just, I, I've tried them in the past and ultimately they just, they were just flaky and, you know, problematic and nothing integrated well. And then, you know, you had issues with other uh, aspects of these things. But when Google announced their Google Home Mini, which is not an outstanding name, I like Pixel. I really, I really think Pixel needs to be its own company. Don't put it with Nest. Nest is its own thing. Pixel needs to be its own company. I want to buy a Pixel Pod. I <laughs> or a Pixel Nuts. Or they, they look like donuts, jelly-filled donuts. Don't don't do that. I think you can't actually put your finger through Google Home. This is really weird. Don't animate a GIF this. Whatever you do. So the, uh, <laughs> the, the 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 more of a pod than the the, the pods we've known in the past was compelling, not because the features, because I'm like, oh, those are really, those are really useful features. I would use that. I, I, I know our family would use the things that they were laying out. But when they announced the price, I'm like, okay. Like, usually for me, if, if I'm kind of on the fence with something, like, maybe $99, depending on its general value is impulse buy, $50, I, I'm, I'm more than willing to try it if I was considering it as a potential use case. $49 is incredibly... Um, affordable in terms of what that thing does for you, what it unlocks. Is it the most amazing speaker experience in the galaxy? No, that's not what it's trying to be. Um, it, it could very well be um, the gateway, this, this simple, low-cost, clean, effective, useful, usable device could be the gateway uh, for people to discover what Google's doing with its hardware, with its software, and with its AI. To move Google past the, uh, the, the point of branding where all it is is the search box. Because that's how people consider Google. Android isn't necessarily synonymous with Google. We've seen OEMs take Android and, 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 and spin it uh, to, to their own uh, uh, um, well detriment to, to a certain degree or to their own uh, uh, ends. So when... You, you, you've got this, this, this uh, uh, solid experience, low-cost experience sitting right there. You know, people come over, they see it, and they're like, wow. I had a friend in, uh, 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 a, that's how people discover things, through friends. Uh, a friend, uh, effectively, on Facebook, he's like, well, I'm thinking about buying this smart speaker thing that everybody seems to like and, and the new Google uh, Home Mini. And I said, well, let me just lay it out for you. This is what Google Home Mini can do. I would... I wasn't like going off of you know what uh, you know a web page. These are the things that I remember. These are the things that I know he would use. These are the things I know I would use. So uh, as I laid it out, he's like, "Oh, it can do that." I'm like, "Yeah," <laughs> and you don't necessarily need another Google product for it to happen. Uh, so because it, it, there are certain compatibilities with iOS or Android, or it's a standalone product, but it, it integrates, of course, more seamlessly with, with uh, uh, Google's other products, specifically in its, its hardware line. Uh, so if they do that and replicate that type of uh, experience with other parts of, of what they have, I think they'll have a winner. Now, Chromebooks have been overtaking uh, the educational market slowly but surely, and, and I, I think for very good reason. Uh, the first Chromebook experience I had, I thought was stellar. It was a few years ago. Um, I think the last time I talked about a Chromebook was when I was slagging Microsoft for not calling it uh, a, real la a, a real laptop. I'm like, whoa, 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 hang on. Oh, let's back the truck up here. Um, it has a keyboard. 
Uh, it's hardware. It's got a screen. Uh, you can run software on it. It's got a platform. It's an operating system. Uh, you set it on your lap. It's a laptop. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're past that now. I think Microsoft's past that now, uh, too, thankfully. So when I uh, 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 saw the Pixel Book, of course I was compelled because I, I've been considering a better secondary computing experience, a larger screen computing experience on, on my desk here. I am using currently an iPad Pro, which may end up going up for sale. Uh, if I do like the Pixel Book and it's able to provide the things that I think I would need or would certainly use on a regular basis using it for notes, using it for documentation, using it for writing, using it for viewing, uh, you know, apps, certainly, uh, as they continue to potentially optimize apps that I would use uh, for, for, you know, from Android running on Chrome OS. Uh, it, it's, it's a compelling use case. What's not compelling is that you may be looking at a premium type of device, touchscreen, you know, interactive, f fast, it's, 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 it's responsive at a distance, because uh, I haven't tried one, um, but even the crappy, and I'm going to say crappy, it was, it was, back then it was, it was probably decent for the price, I think I got it for like a couple hundred bucks, 300 bucks or something, because I was like, I want to try it, it was a good, it was a good experience, I liked the Chromebook, a lot. I just couldn't figure out where it fit into the grand grand scheme of things. It just wasn't it wasn't working for me necessarily. I didn't like how it. I didn't necessarily like I. It got third party crap logos on it, and I just eh, I don't want that. So uh, certainly not staring me in the face. Uh, so um, when when I saw the Pixel Book, I was com I was compelled. Yeah, certainly. But what I want Google to consider is not necessarily competing with the, you know, the people that are fighting for the education market, not driving the price so low, but creating a, a pixel book, not many, I think, we're, I think we're past the point of uh, net books, thank God. Uh, but uh, uh, basically a, a pixel book light, and I wouldn't call it that too, because people will think, oh, it's lightweight, you know, uh, but, but another name, but a, a pixel book a variation, that's maybe not state of the art material, but much like uh, the, the, the the home mini is a compelling experience, uh, I would like to see them do the same thing with a pixel book. Uh, get it down as far as you can, like a three hundred dollar pixel book, and I think I think they'd start selling because once you've got that pixel branding, pixel pixel pod, I, I shouldn't say that the the pixel home speaker, the pixel book, the the pixel phone. You see what I'm saying? It should be the pixel should be more prevalent across the, these devices and they have to do what they did for the the speaker to this uh, laptop type of experience and by doing that again it's it's a gateway to more of the products so if they can make low cost but high qual high quality experiences low cost products i think they'll have a winner i really do and i i, I i'd be shocked if if they weren't considering that it's good that they're not trying to do everything you know all at once all the time uh, but I think it's uh, it's certainly going to serve uh, their their purposes. Even with the Pixel, I think there should be an Android one uh, version of a Pixel, not just the premium line, but make something that's accessible that brings people into the Pixel family. Then you're really going to separate yourself. I'd argue that you'd probably sell more of the high end devices if you had a lower uh, a lower uh, lower quality product. That sounds so bad. Um, a less expensive product. All right, it comes down to budget. Uh, the third thing that they uh, might be able to do to uh, beat Apple is continue to be transparent, social, and cross-platform. Now, I understand Google, social, not exactly words that you've really ever seen in the same sentence before. Let's not go ahead and, and, and talk about uh, Google Plus too much. I think they needed to bring in people who understood social and community early on. They did not. Google Plus is still there. It exists. There are pockets of communities and engagement, but it's 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 there. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm not I'm not talking just about that. It's the fact that there are people who work at Google who have been uh, open with information, who have talked about things, who have engaged people, uh, who, uh, you know, don't just live on Google's uh, platform. They, they, they use Facebook, they use Twitter. Um, they're, they're everywhere. And, and they don't just think in terms of this is a Google-centric 
type of uh, you know company. This is a Google centric experience. Um, they're engaging with community where they are. I don't think they've done a very good job with social. I don't think they've done a very good job with YouTube. They continue to screw things up for producers and viewers alike. Uh, so that's not the issue I'm talking about. I'm saying that they've done enough to be able to give me a belief or to give me a feeling that they're going to be there indefinitely. So as long as they don't reel things in and control that type of communication with employees, I think there's a... Um, a greater chance of, of a deeper engagement. Let me give you an example. I've mentioned his name before. Uh, Tony... Now I'm blanking on his last... Tony Murray. Sorry, I was blanking on his last name. T underscore Murray. I found out about him last year uh, around the launch of the Pixel. Uh, his name somehow came on my radar because he was talking about Pixel performance and what, what he had done to tweak it. So apparently he's largely responsible for the performance of Android on, on the Pixel. I don't know if he's responsible for Chrome OS, uh, uh, the Pixel book, necessarily, but here's what happened. And I apologize if you've heard me relate this story before, because I know I have a couple times in recent days, either on this uh, video channel or in our daily variety show, TLDR, the Locker Gnome Daily Report, at youtube.com slash Locker Gnome. I haven't done that yet today, so I'll be streaming live later. Uh... I effectively watched a video of uh, a Nexus... Oh, I keep saying Nexus instead of Pixel. The Pixel XL2 or 2XL or the Pixel 2. And I saw an animation that kind of jumped out at me. I'm like, oh, oh what's what's that? And, th and then I you know, went on and watched other videos. And I saw the same animation do the same thing on a, in a completely different video. Subsequently, after this experience, I've seen the same animation problem... Uh, on other devices. So let me go ahead and unlock here. I'll just, I'll just, I guess I can demonstrate it. I keep using that as a home button. Okay. So I, I have my LG V30 here. I did the initial impressions review last night. I have Nexus. <laughs> I keep using the word Nexus. Um, Nova launcher on it as, 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 as the launcher. What I'm talking about is specifically the launch of Google Assistant. So we'll launch Google Assistant and then we'll tap at the, at the animation at the top if it did it the way I thought it did, although it's listening. Oh, I keep doing that. It's listening to me and I don't want it to listen to me, so I may actually have to be quiet. Oops. No, that was the drop. Okay, did you see how it goes up and then it pops up? Um, that is a problem. So when I have the 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 visual in my mind of the animation and and then it goes up i need to find someone to fix it right and so effectively i saw this a second time online and and uh uh mentioned it to tony as a reply to one of his tweets about uh, the pixel 2 and he said i'd like to talk about performance and what we did with the pixel 2 you know at, at a later date so i replied to that and i said hey take a look at this you know something doesn't look right with this animation and, uh, uh, cause it just, it goes, uh, he replied and he said, he said, oh yeah, that, I mean, it seems to be a bug. It's not jank. It's, it's, it's something. And he, he mentioned what it was. He said he'd file a bug report. And he says, wow, you look, you see more, you see more jank than this other guy who I guess is the head of engineering for Android. So I got to get to know this other guy. If he's a, if he's an ally in jank or against jank, I've got to get to know him. So the fact that I tweeted the issue, I was able to clarify the issue. He filed the bug report because he knew what the hell was going on. I've never had anything like that happen with Apple. This is the second time Google's done this for me. This, the, the, and, and for you, by the way, if and when that issue gets fixed, you get a better Google Assistant app without even realizing it if you never saw it before. But once you see it, you can't unsee it. It's still an issue. He knows it's a bug. He reported it as a bug. I did the same thing with Google Maps years ago on iOS with the, the, the frame rate being uh, artificially stunted. So that's something that uh, I felt uh, he did a, uh, a, a service, not just to me, but to him and to everybody who's using the Google Assistant app because it doesn't seem to be a pixel issue. If I'm able to re replicate it on any Android device with the app, it's good. I can't, I can't wait for the next update. I really, I, I so can't wait. I can't wait. Try it now. See how it is. Wait for the update. And I'm just going to keep waiting. I'm going to keep waiting. I don't know where the bug report went. But the fact that 
Tony was empowered to do something like that is exciting. Because now, if I see an issue that I think is core to Android, not just a third-party overlay, like, say, with the Pixel, I'm going to start documenting. And I'm like, all right, boom, 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 boom. And when I've got a list, I'm like, hey, you guys, these are some of the issues that I believe are related to the hardware, potentially with the software, that could be modified in software. I don't know how to basically get them fixed. I feel they would go somewhere. That would never, seemingly has never happened with Apple. Ever. So good on Google. Continue to be transparent, social, cross-platform. Uh, another way that I think they could beat Apple, again, I, I have to put it in quotes because it's, it's, everything's relative, but I'm saying these are, these are things that they can do to improve their stature and effectively become a better competitor and potentially force Apple to compete. Uh, start to open true kiosks or stores. I guess there are certain locations that will replace your screen, um, but, you know, there are so many malls around uh, the world. Uh, there are so many locations around the world. Um, even if it was, you know, done in partnership with a, 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 a chain or an entity that already had locations, I'd be fine with that uh, because if I knew that whoever was in that particular station would not just be maybe helping with sales or whatever, but specifically support. If I knew that I could walk into store X or, you know, location Y and, and get my problem solved or ask a few qualifying questions that I can't find anywhere else, um, I feel it would do a great service to Google in, in their line of thinking in, in terms of doubling down on hardware and specifically the pixel strategy. Um, all the more reason I think it needs to be pixel the company. Uh, or maybe even a subsidiary like Google Pixel. Uh, I don't think Nest has got enough of the branding or association with Google, and I, I don't think it needs to. Uh, but if I knew I could go in there and, and get help, that would, n number one, uh, be a reinforcement for a purchasing decision. And number two, it's, it's branding, it's location, it's name, it's recognition. Like, oh, Google has stores now. Huh, okay, Google has hardware? Oh, wow, it's a, oh, wow, that looks, that looks nice. Wow, that's, that's pretty fast. Well, I had no idea they had this too. They have that too? Wow, that's just like this. I was thinking about upgrading it. You see what I'm saying? You, 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 you gotta stop relying on nerds, Google. Gotta stop relying on geeks, Google. I'm just telling you. You know, there, there are certain products out there that are, that are fine for us because we get it. It's not us who's going to move the needle. Who's going to move the needle are the people who walk into stores and who walk into malls. I want to do that every so often. But if they get, if, if they get a known presence and you know what you could do there, I, I think it would, it would serve a great uh, purpose of furthering along the uh, community engagement, furthering along presence, branding, attention, and, and overarching value in, in terms of what Google has to offer beyond just that, that, that search box. It, you understand that. I understand that. But how do I effectively, and I don't know if I have the answer to this, how do I effectively convince someone who has been using an iPhone all these years, and maybe their, their own average Android device all these years, that there's a better experience to be had within Google outright. How, how, do you, how do you make that leap? How do you help them make that leap? Because I can sit here and, and talk about it all the live long day. Average person did not watch minute one, didn't even get past five seconds of this video, let alone 28 minutes. So, you know, I, I really am looking to have them better engage people who need to be engaged. Uh, the last thing that I have on my list is start to develop a low-end Pixel Android 1 device. So that kind of dovetails into the, the low qu uh, products. It was a bit of a stretch, but I think that that, that would be the, the next thing that they should do in terms of uh, like the low-cost uh, products. You probably have different ways that they could do it, like reasonable ways. Feel free to comment. Um, but the, uh, uh, the Android One experience, because this is everybody's primary computer anymore, this, this smartphone, the idea that it's a phone anymore is silly. But... You know, if they release another mini, I think it should be the smartphone and then the Chromebook after that if they're able to do, uh, you know, the, the high quality, lower cost versions. Because, uh, you know, they may be competing against OEMs, but OEMs are going to have a different Android strategy. Um, let Google do it and, and, and get those devices out there. Do trade-ins. Like, trade in your Android device. Well, they couldn't do Android device. But maybe trade in your iPhone and, you know, you'll get a uh, trading this iPhone. You will give you a, a, a Google Pixel Mini or whatever they call it. Google Pixel 1. 
and it's, it's got the Android One experience. Uh, because I think that will, it will be compelling. And then what do they do with those iPhones? They just recycle them. Uh, they can be recycled. They can be, you know, sold, you know, as used devices. You know, it's, they're not going to just get thrown away. Um, they could effectively uh, be recycled. Uh, Apple, why would they care? They sold an iPhone, you know, <laughs> they're good. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, 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 the thing I really want Google to, 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 to consider is how are you going to get to the average person beyond advertising, beyond social media, beyond what you've tried before, beyond the strategy I see you trying now? I'm concerned. I want it to succeed. I want it to succeed if only because I think that's going to elevate everybody else, even if you're not interested in what Google's doing with their, their line of products. So, you know, hopefully I've given you enough, you know, uh, uh, um, things to ponder. Uh, these are my thoughts, the ways that I, you know, came up with. Um, and I know I've listed, you know, probably potentially if you, you've really broke it down more than five. Uh, but I wanted to talk about this, not just because uh, one of you recommended it, because I, I think it's a good topic to talk about. I think uh, um, Google's moving the right direction, and, and it's about time. I'm uh, I'm very hopeful uh, for the immediate and, and far future if Google sticks to this story, because nobody else is. That's oh, it's so exciting. So thank you, everybody, for following me across social. Thank you for tuning in to this video, other videos I do. Thank you for sharing. Because that's the thing. You let other people know what I've done, then they didn't know I existed until you told them. That's awesome. Uh, thank you for joining the community. And yes, we have you know people commenting, but Discord is pretty much the central point for a community now. You can join the Discord chat 24-7 by either being a sub on Twitch. Uh, and you can do that for free if you have your Amazon Prime account connected to it. Or being a patron of mine. And if you're you know also interested, I may, uh, with enough interest, put TLDR, the live broadcasts we do every day, uh, in the other YouTube channel as podcasts exclusive to the patrons. Uh, but all of those, uh, you know, options are there for you uh, in terms of uh, being able to access uh, Discord. Thanks for the super chats when I do the live videos like TLDR, which I'm going to do uh, later this evening. Um, thank you for all the support in, in whatever way that uh, you see fit to give it. I love you. I appreciate you. And at this point, I'm going to leave you to your own devices. May the force be with you.